Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I know we haven't done a lot of videos lately, um, partly because I've been really busy with work and partly because I haven't really had to do anything to Chuck uh, Charles here. Um, but as you can see, the seat is kind of leaning pretty hard to the back right. Well, I was uh, coming out of the airport and I kind of put my foot on the floor to push myself back to make my body straight to get my wallet out. And I don't know if you could see that or not, but the uh, bolt for the adjustment for the back to go forward or backwards uh, has three screws on the right hand side. They're, or bolts rather, they're 5 sixteenths by 18. This is actually a grade eight bolt, but it did snap. Um, and so we're kind of gangster leaning here back. Uh, that's why I've got the, uh, the ladder and the Pelican case there to kind of hold the seat back a little bit forward. Um, it's very uncomfortable to drive like that. Um, so today we're gonna take the seat out and we're gonna take the other side of this bolt, which sheared off uh, in the uh, seat. We're gonna take that out. Now, I did try to take it out with a screwdriver because there is a burr on it. And so I tried to back it out with the screw, but the way that the bolt sheared off, there's like a little, I would call it like a hangnail or whatever. And it's dragging alongside of the uh, insert for the bolt itself. So I did buy a pack of bolts, uh, 5 16th by 18 thread, grade eights again, uh, zinc plated at an auto parts store. Uh, and we're going to replace those today. Typically, I would weld a nut onto the sheared off bolt there and back it out with a wrench. Uh, but because it's surrounded by cloth and when I pull the seat, we'll get a little bit more in depth to that. When I pull the seat out, you'll see uh, there's cloth around there. And I don't know. I don't really want to start a fire. Uh, these seats are in really good shape uh, for being 32 plus years old. Uh, and then we're going to uh, replace them all and put the seat back. And while we have the seat out, I'll probably vacuum out that area and clean it up real good and see what we find uh, underneath the seat. I don't know if they've ever been taken out. Uh, and then I would like to see if I can take the right-hand side armrest off of the back as well. Uh, there's not a lot of padding or any padding in there. And when you're putting your arm on there for long periods of time, it does kind of get sore after a while. So we're gonna see if we could take that arm off and see if we could take the covering off of the right hand side and maybe put a piece of foam in there or something on top and then slip the cover to the armrest back on. Uh, I'm not gonna really zoom in too much. You're just gonna kind of get a wide version here. Uh, there's really nowhere to put the camera and you're not really gonna see much till the seat's out anyway. So uh, stick around, more to come and thanks for watching. <laughs> Okay, so we got the seat out. <clears throat> so the bottom is held in by four 9 16 bolts. The side closest to the door is held on by two T45 star bits or Torx bits. And then these are two here and here, 5 16 with a half inch nut on top. Uh, this one's fine, it's no problem right here. You could see where it sheared off. Now I am gonna try, before I try to drill it, cause this is kind of an awkward thing to drill. I am gonna try to see if I can get it out with a screwdriver uh, now that I have a lot of access to it and some leverage. If not, I'm gonna try drilling it. And then last case, I'll probably douse all this with water and then you know weld a hex head nut on there and see if we can't uh, rip it out with a, uh, a wrench or an impact or something like that. So more to come, stick around.
couldn't get my quick center broken stud tool to align over the bolt correctly. So what's next you ask? We go to the welder. So I found a nut that's kind of close to the same size as the stud here. So I'm gonna ground this out, hit it with a few tacks and then uh, fill it up. I am going to wet this area with water. I just don't wanna start a fire on the seat because like I said, they're in great shape. So we'll do that and then we'll see uh, if we can get this broken stud out so we can fix our suburban seat for the 1990 R2500. <laughs> So we got that bolt out. It was pretty easy. I think uh, adding the heat from the welder uh, definitely helped with that. And uh, other than being wet, the seat uh, came out pretty good. So I'm just gonna use a bolt and thread chase that to make sure that's okay. And then uh, we'll put her back together. There's a screw in between here, but I'm gonna pull this cloth back, but you can see all the disintegrating foam coming out on the floor, etc. cetera. But uh, I think that's what's holding it on, that nut right there. So I'm gonna clean all this up and then uh, take this arm off and see if we can't put a piece of foam in there and get the cloth back on and then get it back on. So we'll see. Want to come? All right, so I cut that piece of foam out there. I used some of this uh, E6000 to get that on there. It says it takes 24 hours to dry, but I'm hoping I can get the cover back on at least to about here. That way it'll hold that down for sure. And then I can put the seat back together. So earlier I was twisting this with the screwdriver. This goes on the inside here. And what this really does, once they're there, is it stops the arm from coming one way or the other. It's slipping off already. So, the where it stops. So if you lift this up, this Phillips head up or down, it'll go down or stop higher. I guess it's a rough adjustment for the uh, stopping point. So, which is a good thing too, because it needed to get adjusted too, because when you're sitting in the car, it was actually pointed down a little bit. So we'll correct that again and see if we can't get that cover on this uh, crusty old armrest and uh, keep moving forward. <laughs> So I've got the foam piece back on there and I've got my <clears throat> trim piece back on here for it. It feels pretty good. The glue, like I said, it says it's going to take 24 hours to dry. So I'm trying to keep this here, put it all back together so it won't come apart. I guess the biggest hurdle I'm going to have is getting the back piece on the rear of it 
and then I guess I'll use a screwdriver or whatever to kind of tuck it up underneath there. There are no, uh, I would, seams like this with the, I don't know what they're called, but with the bead on them on the backside. So it'll, once it gets under there, it'll kind of catch. I think it's just kind of there by, uh, whatchamacallit, friction. So uh, I'm going to do that next. Um, and then we'll bolt the seat back together and then we'll put it back into the truck. But uh, as you can see, I, 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 I said there was three screws. There's only there's only two. Uh, and this is the one that broke. This is the pivot point. Uh, this is the front point and this is the pivot point. And then obviously it'll change uh, the rear seat uh, backwards and forwards motion with this dial here. It is on the inside of the seat. So this would be my right arm that sits here. So this is adjusted on the right. I believe it's because of the seat belt that gets in the way. And I do have a new seat belt for the driver's side. I may or may not do that today. Um, it's typical, you know, square body seat belt where as soon as you put it on, it's tight. And then over the course of you driving, it gets loose. You got to pull it out and let it go and it'll get tight again. And then this is the other side because there's no adjustment. It's just, you know, freestanding there. And I did look at this rivet and it looks pretty good. You know, there's a little movement in there, but nothing crazy. Uh, if that does break, I'll drill that out and then, you know, put a bolt in that again in the future. But I don't, I don't anticipate that most of the weight is on this side when you're driving. If you're, you know, right handed because you're you're leaning back a little bit while you're holding on to the wheel or something. And the hog rings down here look pretty good. No rust, no tears, no nicks, nothing like that. And again, this is really why I wanted to save the seat because it is in such really good condition um, and it's comfortable. So moving on. Well, the seat is fixed, so I didn't see anything crazy up underneath here. There wasn't like anything nuts. I even kind of looked up under to see if I could see anything poking out. This wire right here, you can see it comes up into the seat belt. I assume that that's probably like a once the car is running aground for the dash to indicate, hey, put your seat belt on, but it doesn't work anyway. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the front mat out, uh, and I'll probably take the back mat out too and then I'm just gonna vacuum all this out while I got it out and I'm gonna use my white drill doctor brush to uh, agitate the carpet and get everything out of here I, don't know, I may even see how there's some spotting there I may just I may just wash it I, I don't I don't know we'll see I don't know so I'm gonna do all that I'm not gonna record any of that crap uh, and then uh, we'll come back and then we'll finish putting the seat in um, I guess the next job is uh, to replace this, the the brake boot cover there. Uh, obviously, I rest my foot here when I'm sitting in traffic, and it just worn it away. Um, and then the other thing, I was driving down the road, beautiful Atlanta, and that broke, and uh, I got to replace that. Uh, the passenger side one that was replaced before is still holding up, but. We'll keep on going, more to come. And we're back. Um, the bolt right here, so the front left for the driver's side, that came out really hard. And as I looked at the bolt, the threads kind of looked a little smushed on it. So I thread chased that, and then I thread chased the hole at the bottom there. So the seat's in, it looks good. Everything's operational, I'm gonna bolt it back in. I did end up vacuuming all the carpet and then using the Bissell Spot Pro and the Drill Doctor. To kind of clean all that up so i'm just going to put the bolts back in and then uh, we'll finish up and we'll go over uh, the end of the video all right job done feels good i adjusted the armrest everything's all good 
Couple of things, uh, on the foam on the armrest, I probably would cut the foam a little bit wider than the actual armrest. I cut it to about exact size, and while it feels fantastic, it just, I, I, I could have extended it over, you know, this portion of it and bent it down. That probably would have been a little bit better. Uh, and I probably would have cut it maybe a little bit wider just so, like, you don't roll off of it. Um, but I'm sure as the foam breaks in and, you know, it'll get a little bit better. I did adjust it to while where we have the seat now. This is typically how I drive. It's got a good arm levelness. Uh, that's that screw. The Phillips head that stops it from coming down like that. Uh, the seat does feel a lot tighter, even though it doesn't look a lot tighter. I think the play that you hear or see is in the tracks of the actual seat, not the mounting points to where I did. Uh, not only here, but uh, down in here. Uh, the, the grade 8 bolts that I did get are zinc coated, so I'm hoping they last a little bit longer. As you can see, I've got the cleaned it up got the carpet cleaned up there was a couple of spots I couldn't get out but hey and carpet's old uh i was told that at some point somebody did replace the carpet but hey whoever did it did a pretty good job it looks it looks pretty good and the vintage of this uh interior is wearing quite well i might say uh the next thing we got coming up um we're gonna be replacing this radio um probably about three weeks ago maybe i do have two tens in the back uh on a rockville amp and it's been cutting out uh the sub was all just stopped hitting and i pulled the radio out yesterday when i got to the shop for work and that thing was blazing hot uh, i double checked the wiring everything looks normal there's no shorts there's no brakes in any cable but it's just hot so i have a feeling this radio is on its way out it's it's probably five years old at this point and i've had it in two different cars so we're gonna order another one and we're gonna change that out and then um i've been putting my phone there and using that for uh gps and all that other stuff but they came out with a device it's a seven inch screen that you can plug your phone into and power to the screen and then plug your aux cable into it to allow a single din any din with an aux cable to uh, have apple carplay so that's going to be coming up next um like i said the mirror and then um what else needs to get done oh the air conditioning stopped working now i did replace the compressor last year because it was really not making cold air and I replaced it and the air conditioning was great all last year and then I went to turn it on the other day because it was a rare day in Georgia where it was super hot and I needed it and nothing just regular outside air blew on it so either we have a leak or uh, there's something going on with the compressor I, I don't know so we'll probably end up pulling another set of vacuum on there maybe adding a lot more dye and see if we can't find a, uh, a leak it is because it does have rear AC um, there you know you can see i gotta get a new switch for that but it does have rear ac so there's quite a bit of plumbing in this truck for uh rear ac and and the regular ac so i'll double check that and then maybe we'll do a video on that and then the speedometer stopped working at 122,672 miles and point and seven tenths but uh i can guarantee i've put at least 80 on it uh in the past two years so uh this has definitely got 200,000 miles on it for sure uh uh, I do want to replace that. I don't know when it's going to happen, but if I do do it, I'll probably do it. Uh, I'll probably put the speedometer over here uh, with those uh, speed hut ones where it's got the speedometer and a gas gauge. And then I'll probably put a tachometer on this side uh, because, like I said, they're all digital. And the speed, uh, speed hut one is off of GPS. So, uh, yeah. Other than that, job done. Uh, stick around for more episodes. Oh, we, we also have to put the headlights on uh, relays. Uh, we got to do that because the high beams are great, but the low beams, they're like driving down the road with an old flashlight. It's, it's not good at all. So we got to do that. Maybe we'll change the headlights at the same time. Uh, so yeah, stick around. More to come and have a good day. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe down below.